Dear believers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Inna alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ufiruhu Wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakul alayk Wa na'udhu billahi min shuhuri anfusina Wa min sayyiyati amalina Min yahdi allahu falamudillala Wa min yudlilhu falahadi allahu Wa ashadu an la ilaha ilallahu wahdahu la sharika lahu Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi sallam قال الله تعالى في القرآن يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله قاتوا قاتيه ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا والنساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحم إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما ثم عما بعد. We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله for this beautiful day of يوم الجمعة this day of congregation the day of coming together to hear a remembrance from Allah تعالى something positive for us, something that will get us back into the reminder of what we're supposed to be doing. The same thing we get from the hunger pains of fasting, a reminder. Every moment we pick up the Quran, every ahadith we hear, every salawat upon the Prophet وسلم, may it be a reminder, may it be an expiation, may it be a means in which Allah Ta'ala admits us into his Jannah without reckoning. Ameen. Allah Ta'ala, he says in his Qur'an, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل الحمد لله سيريكم آياته فتعريفونها وما ربك بغافل عما تعملون Allah Ta'ala, he says, and say, praise belongs to Allah who will show you his signs. Then you will recognize them. And your Lord is not unaware of what you do. That segues into what Ta'ala, we want to talk about today. Signs of Allah. And what we find our sign in. You know how the rest of the world, they want to talk about signs. And how these things are indicative of behaviors. And how you're going to be. Well, with Allah Ta'ala, what is indicative of what you're going to be are the signs that you possess. So we want to examine what signs that Allah has put forth that we may possess and that we may find ourselves. And these signs can be very enlightening, very, very heartfelt, and they can also be very scary. And there are signs 
which point to us being good and submissive, good deeds and good behavior, and there are signs that can let us know that we're going down the wrong street, the wrong path, that we're going towards Allah's anger and his wrath and not his mercy and his, and his delight. Muawiyah ibn Haydar radiallahu anhu, he reported, I said, O Prophet of Allah, I ask you by the face of Allah Almighty, with what did your Lord send you? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported that he said, Islam. And I said, what are the signs of Islam? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that you declare the surrender of your face to Allah Almighty. Relinquish your old ways, perform the salah, and give the zakat. Every Muslim is sacred to another Muslim. Two brothers supporting each other. Allah Almighty will not accept the good deeds of an idolater after he embraces Islam until he leaves the idolaters for the believers to be with the Muslims. When reflecting upon a hadith that speak about Iman, Islam, and Ihsan, we think about the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, in which he came and he spoke to the Prophet and he asked the Prophet a series of questions. But as, as not just to look at these, these narrations, but let's see if we can find ourselves within these things. Allah Ta'ala has blessed, and the reason I'm going to say this is because we have some guests, but almost everyone here with Islam. But even the guest who has come seeking Allah's countenance, the one who has come seeking Allah's guidance, Allah has already extended Islam to him or her. And when that person takes shahada, that is a declaration for you and I to know what this person is. But when Allah Ta'ala opens the heart of a person and he gives them the desire to come to know him, they have already been given Islam, which is a mercy from Allah Ta'ala. None of us here, none of us here are by our own accord. So don't think for a moment that you and I could do any amount of good deeds that in which we would deserve this. It is a rahmah from Allah. Don't think for a moment that if any of us get Jannah, it is by our deeds. It is indeed by the rahmah of Allah. So much so, when the Prophet ﷺ said it, that that success is by the rahmah of Allah, they said, Ya Rasulullah, even you, he says, even me, nobody is given Jannah except by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not by your deeds alone. Part of this ahadith is that we look at the basis of ourselves. The basis of ourselves is that we are Muslim. The basis of our inner intent in Islam is Allah's Rahmah. But we have to stop looking at being a Muslim as the final abode, that it is the ultimate reality. Because if we research into the Hadith of Jibril, the Prophet was explaining that there are levels to this. We come in as Muslims, but don't stop there. You know what we you know what we'll end up doing? We'll end up being like the rest of creation. When they, will, when they will get a, a mercy from Allah Ta'ala, and then they will begin to rationalize it and justify their deeds, their misdeeds, their disobeying Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Oh, Allah knows my heart. But in reality, these are the things which should scare you most, that Allah Ta'ala knows our hearts. He knows how true and sincere we are. And remember the narration of the first to be judged on Yawm Al-Qiyam, the one who recited the Quran, the people who did the good deeds, the people who displayed the manners in which they said they did these things, they gave in charity, they fought in, in Allah's cause. But Allah Ta'ala will reveal what is truly on the heart of the people who say they believe. So it is better for us to submit and realize that we need to step it up. That there is a stage above what Allah Ta'ala has given, given us in this mercy. And that we should be striving with every fiber of our beings to reach the heights in which Allah Ta'ala is pleased and is loving towards his servants. Amr ibn, ibn Abbasah radiallahu anhu, he reported, I came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and I said, O Messenger of Allah, who is with you in this matter? The Prophet sallam, said, the free and the enslaved. I said, what is Islam? The Prophet sallam, said, kind words and feeding the hungry. I said, what is Iman? The Prophet said, he said, patience and tolerance. And I said, who, whose Islam is the best? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, one from whose tongue 
and hands, the Muslims are safe. I said, whose faith is the best? The Prophet said, I said, one with good character. I said, which salah is the best? The Prophet said, one with long dua, supplication. I said, which immigration, which hajj is the best? The Prophet said, to immigrate away from what is hated by the Lord Almighty. And I said, whose jihad is the best? The Prophet said, I'm said one's whose, one whose horse has fallen and his blood gushes forth. And I said, which hours are the best? The Prophet said, the depths of the late night. Can you find yourself within these narrations? Think about it. Can you find yourself? I, mashallah, if you're not praying all night, Allahu Alam. Are you standing up for one salat, one sunnah, one na'afil? These things are the things that change the world. These are the things in which you and I don't know what Allah is going to assign weight to and how much of a difference it could make. The mere fact that you and I are Muslim now could be from a dua of our great, great, great grandparents, our great, great, great grandmothers and grandfathers, those who struggled in this country, those who struggled in their own lands. They begged Allah for us. Just as when the people of Taif who say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to this day, do you know that these were people who are descendants of a people who harmed your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Come forward, brothers. Everybody, scoot forward. Do you know these are descendants of a people who shed the blood of your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? But he is rahmatil alameen and in the structure of his being what Allah Ta'ala described as the mercy to all of creation. The Prophet Sallallahu sought not to destroy these people, but he sought to make dua for them. And he asked Allah that may come from them descendants who what? Who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, who uphold the banner of Islam. The point of his whole existence was to bring people to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But he didn't forget it when people struck him. He didn't forget his mission when everything was against him. He didn't forget what he was here for when the weight of the world was on his shoulders. No, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he dug deeper and deeper into, into worshiping Allah Ta'ala. Deeper and deeper into begging Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for his ummah. And it's still not over. Your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he has shown our deeds in the grave right now, when he has shown the deeds of his ummah, when he finds something pleasing, he praises Allah. And when he finds something displeasing to Allah, he begs Allah Ta'ala for our mercy and our forgiveness. It don't stop there. On the day in which there is no shade except the shade of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that no one can speak, that no one can make a claim, no, there's no more istighfar, there's no more begging Allah for forgiveness. The day in which you and I are running amok and we're running all over the place concerned with ourselves and our children, our parents are calling out for us and we ain't got nothing for them. That day, you and I as Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will be the only one yelling out, Ummati, Ummati, my people, my people. So yeah, we need to get a grasp on this right now or it will not be a reality for us in the Akhirah. And if we don't let go of things right now, those things will be a reality for us on Yawm al -Qiyam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught us a wonderful dua. رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّهِ وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ وَبِسَيِّدِنَ مُحَمِّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ نَبِيَّ وَرَسُولَ These are the last things that you and I will hear بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى when we are being washed and being buried. That we are to recite these things when we are asked the questions in the grave. That we are pleased with Allah. رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّهِ Allah is our Lord. وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينَ And we are pleased with Islam as our deen. And with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam as our prophet. But if you and I are not in the practice of living this, it will not be a reality upon your lips and your tongue in the grave. That is the truth. If you are not steadfast in this, in this world now, it will not be a reality of you on your muqiyan. It will not be a reality of you in the grave. If you do not re recite this Qur'an, attempt to learn to recite this Qur'an, struggle with this Qur'an for Allah Ta'ala's sake, it will not become a beautiful human being who will testify you for you on your muqiyam. You won't have these realities. You won't have these signs. But if you and I are persistent in lying, cheating, harming people, stealing, 
just downright being an ignorant human being. The reality is that you and I may very well, may Allah protect us, die as the monastic. We're talking about signs. What signs are prevalent in yourself? Al Nawas ibn Saban, radiallahu anhu, he reported the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said, Allah strikes a parable of the straight path. On either side of the path are walls with open doors over which are hanging curtains. Upon the gate of the path is a caller saying, O people, enter the straight path altogether and do not divert to the side. A caller is placed above the path and when anyone attends to open the doors in the slightest, he says, woe to you, do not open it or else you will enter it. That path is Islam. The curtains are the limits of Allah and the open doors are the, pro are the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The caller at the head of the path is the kitab Allah, is the book of Allah. And the caller above the path is the admonition from Allah in the hearts of every single Muslim. Allah ta'ala has placed it deeply within our hearts. Brothers, scoot up. We have more people. Scoot up. Deeply within the heart of the believer, deeply within the heart of the person, of every soul, rest the fitra, rest the recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is what you and I do day in and day out that is going to dictate how you and I respond on your Qiyah. How you and I respond to the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How you and I recognize the signs within ourselves and what signs will be prevalent. Allah Ta'ala, he says, Salatul Hujrat. Allah Ta'ala, he says, I will be led in the Shaytan Rajim. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Allah says, Qalatilla Rabu Amanna Kulam Tuminu Walak Walakin Ulu Aslamna Walamma Yadhulil Imanu Fi Kulu Bikum. This is talking about the stages and what we need to understand about ourselves. When the Bedouins made a comment, they have, they said, we have come to believe. So they gave themselves the next stage up. They gave themselves the stage of the mu'min. So they went from being a Muslim to a mu'min themselves, self-proclaimed. How many of us walk around calling ourselves believers? I'm a mu'min. But don't know the definition of a mu'min. Don't understand what is the description of a mu'min. Yes, the Muslim is the one who says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the one who established Salat, the one who establishes the Zakat, the one who establishes the fast, the one who goes on Hajj. These are all the signs of the Muslim. But what are the signs of the Mu'min, the believer? And Allah Ta'ala corrects him. He says, say, you have not come to believe yet. Instead, you should say we have surrendered and belief has not en entered your heart so far. How is it that we think about our Iman, our belief? And how deep is it within our souls and ourselves? How has it entered our heart? And how has it been reflected in our behavior? Abu Firas radiallahu anhu reported the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, ask me about whatever you wish. A man called out, oh messenger of Allah, what is Islam? The Prophet sallam, said to perform prayer and to give charity. The man said, what is Iman? The Prophet sallam, he said, Ikhlas, it is sincerity. The man said, what is conviction? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, certainly in the truth of the resurrection. Think about these things. Our day to day, we're going in and out. Salat, five times a day. Alhamdulillah, may Allah Ta'ala give you success in it if you don't have success in it. And may Allah Ta'ala extend success in it if you do have success in it. I mean, but we're talking about different stages. You, the hellfire, eternity has for, eternity in the hellfire has been forbidden for the one who says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. We understand that. 
But do you also understand that as one who says, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah that you can be purified by the hellfire? Do you remember the narration of the one who stood outside the gates of hell? The Prophet said, when the door swung open, he felt the breath from the hellfire, the wind, a gust of wind from the hellfire. And he thought he was in the most painful depths of the hellfire, just from the gas of it. You ever light a fire going camp and you get just a wind and it's, it's hot? You ever be near fireworks and you get a wind? This is indescribable. This person thought he was in the worst part of hellfire. Why would you and I want to even risk that? I don't want no parts of it. But that has to be dictated through my behavior, through my sincerity with this. If all you got is the minimum of Islam, by Allah's mercy, you will be successful if you are truthful in it. But be sincere with it. Have a sincere desire to please Allah and be aimed towards Allah. Part of that is reflecting on ourselves and being real. Being real. Whatever age you are, I'm 43. I wasted a lot of years. We talked about this the other day in the masjid, how much nonsense I've memorized when I could have memorized more Quran. How much nonsense I memorized when I could have memorized more and I could have adapted more behaviors of the Prophet You want to be a beautiful person before Allah Ta'ala, you have to practice beauty. Or else you will practice ugliness and on Yom Qiyam you will come as an ugly person, a detestable person, a person that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will not even recognize. Can you imagine? The Prophet Sallallahu has already said he seeks the ones who he loves, the ones who've never met him but love him. These are his brothers, his sisters. But if we display an ugliness, ugliness that is contradictory to his sunnah, then on Yom Qiyam he won't even recognize. We will have abandoned the sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. Allah Ta'ala, He says, Inna Allah ma'al ladina taqawwal ladina hum muhsinun. He says, Surely Allah is with those who fear Him and those who are good in their deeds. So we're not talking about the basics of just being a Muslim because. Typically, that, that will be a personal thing with you and Allah. We're talking about the step up is when you go out in the world. Are you a shining example? Are you a reflection of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? The beauty of the Prophet ﷺ? Are you a reflection of how he treated people? You ever, and I, I want you to think about it like this. Some people do good deeds for a number of reasons. One of the reasons I keep personal to myself about any deed I do, it has its traces in the narration of love. When I find that people not loving me, it's fearful to me because it, it, it makes me believe maybe they think I'm after something that they want in this world and, 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 they, and they can't trust me. And I don't like that feeling. But when I find people that love me and I love being around them, it makes me think that a lot of other angels love me. And it makes me think that Allah Ta'ala loves me. And it has me hopeful that on Yom Qiyam, that that love will show and that I will be amongst the company of the Prophet said, I'm in the best of people. And we all wish to be amongst the company of each other, but we gotta start treating each other better just on a basic level. Basic level, brothers, stop abusing your women. Stop it. Sisters, stop abusing your husbands. Physically, mentally, verbally, these are ugly things that will take form and will testify against us when Yom Qiyam. And you can be a person who wasted all their good deeds. Imagine that. Allah Ta'ala is not in need of your salat. He is not in need of your zakat. He is not in need of our fasting. He is not in need of our hunger. If we don't get the point from all of this, we can be a people who wasted their time. There's a few things of signs that we should be conscious of that we should fear. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and he reported the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said, Woe to the Arabs for an evil tribulation approaching like darkness, like darkness part of the night. A man will wake up as a believer, but by the evening will be an unbeliever. People will sell their religion for some pitiful gains in the world. 
and the ones who adhere to his religion on the day will be as if they were grasping a hot coal or a bundle of thorns. I want you to think about the difficulties that our Prophet said I was describing. How strong are you and I in our feet? Are we prepared? Think about it. That parable has a reality. Can you right now hold a coal? And if you think about your deen within your hand, your obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, are you holding on to it firmly? Are you barely making it? May Allah ta'ala give us all success. But we have to start being real within ourselves. Abdullah ibn Hin, he reported, radiallahu anh, that Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Verily, faith begins like a fragment of white in the heart. Now listen to this very carefully. Faith begins like a fragment of white in the heart. Iman. Each time Iman increases in magnitude, it increases in the nur. It increases in light. Each time his faith increases, it increases in light and brightness. When he completes his faith, the entire heart is brightened. Verily, listen to this. Because sometimes we think this is just something out of the history books. The munafiqeen were people during the time of the Prophet No, we got munafiqoon right now. We, you and I may very well be from among them. May Allah Ta'ala protect us from that. He says, verily hypocrisy begins like a fragment in the heart. Each time hypocrisy increases in magnitude, it increases that darkness. When he completes his hypocrisy, the entire heart is darkened. And he said, I swear by Allah, if you were to split open the heart of a believer, you would find brightness. And if you were to split open the heart of a hypocrite, you would find darkness. What do the hypocrite and the believer have in common? They profess with their mouths, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What do the hypocrites again have in common with the believer? They stand in salat. They claim fasting. They claim belief. They claim the grasp, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, but it is not shown in their behavior. And on Yawm al these will be amongst the worst people, the worst losers, and the bottom depths of hellfire. You and I must flee from hypocrisy. But first, we got to know what it is. We got to know its signs. And we got to make sure it's not within us. Abu Hurairah, he reported the message of Allah, I'm saying, among the signs of the hypocrite are three. Even if he fasts and prays, it claims to be a Muslim. When he speaks, he lies. When he gives a promise, he breaks it. And when he is entrusted, he betrays that trust. Ibn Rajab reported, Ka'ab ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, he said, may Allah be pleased with him, said, whoever fasts the month, the month of Ramadan and he says to himself, and he thinks to himself, and he says to himself, think about this seriously, that he will return to sin sinful disobedience when Ramadan is over. We are told that your fast is rejected. So if your plan is to pause now and to get back to your, your, your nonsense, to go right back to disobedience to Allah, your minds will not even fast. It's going to be rejected. Believers, inshallah ta'ala, the final two things we'll mention, inshallah ta'ala, in the second part, we'll try to be brief so we can perform the salat, is about the wasting of time and the wasting of deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who are conscious of the instructions that he has for us, the delight that we will find in them, and the delight that he will have for us on Yom Qiyam if we obey. <laughs> Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported it, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, do you know who are the bankrupt? And these are the muflis, the bankrupt. And the companions, they said, the one without money or goods. This is the person, the money, ain't got no money and he can't have no fun. This is the person who's bankrupt. 
the Prophet said, he said, verily, the bankrupt of my nation, listen to this, of my nation are those who come on Yawm al with Salat. Listen to this. Find yourself of the nation of Muhammad Sallallahu the bankrupt, the ones who have nothing. These are the people who come with much Salat, much fasting, much charity, but they also come with insults, slander, stealing, consuming wealth, shedding blood, and beating and harming others. The oppressed will each be given from his or her good deeds. If his good deeds run out before justice is fulfilled, then their sins will be cast upon him and he will be thrown into the hellfire. This is a description of the people who perform salat, the people who say they fast, the people who go on hajj. This is a description of what you and I could be. May Allah Ta'ala protect us from that. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu reported the Prophet said, Verily, bad character spoils deeds just as vinegar spoils honey. We tend to forget that the Prophet وسلم, when he was asked what was he sent for, the point of his mission, he said, I have come to perfect character. So if you and I are not perfecting or attempting to perfect our character or struggling in the mode to perfect our character, just think about what these things do to you when you're not struggling to perfect your character and you come with the ugly character to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you come with the salat and the zakat and the fasting. All these things that you said are to be done all these things that you proclaim, they will become a yoke upon your neck and these will be the things that actually weigh you down. You will lose all your good deeds and these will be the things that actually testify against you. That's like walking around saying you believe in all these great things of being clean and all, and you walk around stinking. You know what we Muslims are known for? We're known for some good smells, some good oils, right? And if you come across a Muslim who don't have a good smell and they got a bad smell on them, you can recognize, man, they're missing something. They're not getting the point of something. Same thing when it comes to Iman. If on Yom al you and I are cast into the hellfire, yet we bring the salat and zakat and the fasting and the charity and all these different things we bring to Allah Ta'ala, that means you and I have fell somewhere. But we got to start looking at the signs. What's your sign? Which one is yours? May Allah Ta'ala protect us. We talk about the signs of the hour. I hope we cannot find ourselves in these things. Abdul Rahman ibn Yazid, Yazid reported, radiallahu anhu, that ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, said, the righteous will disappear and the people of doubts will remain. They said, oh, Abu Abdul Rahman, who are the people of doubts? Ibn Mas'ud said, people who do not enjoin good and who do not forbid evil. In another narration, ibn Mas'ud said, they do not acknowledge good nor reject evil. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. We are becoming... A ummah in which we turn our heads from that which we know is wrong. We are becoming a, a people who don't even have the weakest form of faith to be against something in our heart. We turn all away completely and we allow transgressions of Allah Ta'ala. We allow transgressions upon the sunnah of the Prophet We allow transgressions. And some of us so soft you allow transgressions against your own mothers and sisters. You're scared to speak up for what's right. You want everybody to think you are right. You want everybody to think you with them. You scared to speak up. Why are we scared to be like Umar radiallahu anhu? When he thought something was wrong, he snatched you up and dragged you. Bring you right to the Prophet sallallahu We need more Umars around here radiallahu anhu. This is what we need. We are turning into a generation where the men are not manly. And the women are not womenly. We're not acting, acting masculine. And the women are not acting like ladies. We're scared to speak truth to each other. If you're not married, you're shacking up boyfriend and girlfriend that is not within this deen. It will be rejected. And think about all the good deeds that you are trying to do in the cause of Allah Ta'ala, but you reject what Allah Ta'ala has instructed you for some deep reason within yourself because you're scared to face the truth. You're scared to speak up. You're not a man, you're not a woman. All your deeds can be rejected on your monkey yam. Think of how stupid you'll look on that day. How dumb you're going to feel. You wasted your time for him. You wasted your time for her. 
You gave away all the things that Allah Ta'ala gave you. For what? For prestige from who? From a person you think got prestige? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the person we should be trying to impress. He is the one we should be looking for to look upon us for the signs of his sunnah. Just imagine. And all that you learned of cleanliness in Islam, I want you to take this thing. All that you learned in cleanliness, it's stinger, how to properly wipe yourself. Imagine if a people were calling you back to that and you went right back to it. That is the similitude of us going back in these behaviors and allowing these young people to come into the nation to be the leaders. Shame on us men. There should be no children in here leading us unless we let them lead because we showed them how to lead. The children are dictating Islam. They're dictating how to dress. They're dictating how to act in the month of Ramadan. He's okay. They're okay. They need to watch us. They need to watch how we move. They need to know when a man speaks, these young people, they don't recognize us as men. They're walking into the messages around the country right now. Seeking to harm your women, seeking to harm your children, because they have no respect for your manhood. It reminds me of the history, and we'll end with this, inshallah ta'ala. If you know anything about the fall of the Ottoman Empire, or actually the battle with, the, um, with Genghis Khan. When Genghis Khan captured the Muslims, he captured the Muslims. He slaughtered the men. He held captive the Sultan. And the Sultan asked for food and the people told Genghis Khan and he said, give him the gold. Take him mounds of gold. They brought heaps of gold to the Sultan. And the Sultan said, I can't eat this. You know what Genghis Khan said to him? Didn't you hear about me? Didn't you know about me? Didn't you hear what me and my people were doing? Did you not hear about us? He said, you were getting fat. He said, eat the gold. You were hoarding it up. Shouldn't you be able to eat it? He said, why? He said, the reason why he never attacked the Muslims before, he said, because these were men. These were warriors. He said, man, now Genghis Khan, if you know the history, he would not back down to a fight. But when it came to the Muslims, he saw something in them from before that was still reflective of the Prophet Sallallahu and the righteous predecessors. He saw manhood and he refused to go into the slaughter. But upon this time, he saw a weakness. He saw that they left manhood. They left Iman. They were heaping up mounds of gold and silver. They were all about the dunya. And he said, on this day, I am the wrath of Allah upon you. That's what he told the Sultan at the time. I am Allah's wrath upon you. Now look at the rahmah from your Lord. From the progeny of Genghis Khan. <laughs> you come to all the Muslims with the last name Khan and all the... They all accepted Islam. So even in his niyyah, his intention, Allah Ta'ala showed you who would be the one who, who creates the success. But think about the lesson, how stupid the Sultan must have felt when that was said to him. Man, think about how dumb he must have felt. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. Abdullah ibn Amr reported the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, the hour will not be established until people, I'm going to use this word, people mate with each other in the road as if they were donkeys. I said, will it really happen? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, yes, it will truly happen. And you and I know very well we've seen far worse. You and I know very well we seek to protect our children from far worse what they have in their hands, the computers and the technology gives them access and gives the jail access to them. Dear believers, Allahu A'la knows we are in the final days. These are signs. We have to find the signs within these signs to find out which ones are reflected in us. Are the men gonna stand up and be men? Are the women gonna stand up and be women and allow their men to be men? Stop interfering. Stop raising your boys to be less than. Stop making them cowards. Stop showering them with all types of gifts and praise. Let them stand up. Sisters, you better not take out the trash again in your home. 
You better get that prince you call a prince off that video game, and you better kick it in gear. If you don't have no husband in the house, but you got a son, teach him from when he's young. Take his little two-year-old behind and put the trash bag in his hand, and you help him carry it outside. Stop letting them turn into less than men. And brothers, get there. Be there. Marry these sisters. Stop playing games. Stop wasting your time, her time, your treasures. You're going to be called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your hands and your feet, your limbs and your tongues will all testify either for us or against us. We should have a taqwa of Allah. Allah ta'ala, he says, a taqwa Allah, a taqwa Allah haqatu qati. According to Allah's right, not your desires. Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama salaita ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala Sayyidina Ibrahim. I thank you for your kind attention. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.